Good evening and welcome to the Town of Scarborough Planning Board meeting uh, workshop for Thursday, March 5th, 2020. If we could all rise and say Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Dorian, could you call the roll, please? Here. 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 Thank you. We have two sets of meeting minutes. It's from October 24th, 2019 and December 12th, 2019. Uh, are there any notes or changes anyone want to make before we have a motion and a chance to review those? All right. I'll entertain a motion to accept the minutes from October and December. So moved. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? So that's unanimous. Thank you. Next item on the agenda tonight is Crossroad Holdings LLC requests a conceptual master plan review for the town center north and highest districts within the town, the Downs. Excuse me. Jamel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so based on the board's prior review, the site inventory and analysis for the core planning districts, uh, the applicants submitted an application, a uh, master plan review for the town center north and high guest districts at the Downs. Uh, so the applicants proposing a mixed use development on approximately 190 acres on the property. The design includes a grid and block pattern within the town center north district and a corridor design within the high guest districts. Uh, the proposal includes a mix of commercial, office, residential, and community oriented uses. uses along with a network of public open spaces. The proposal also includes a road connection uh, from the Downs to Pygus Parkway. As a reminder, the master plan phase is intended to lay out how the plan development will be developed, including the proposed use of various parts of the site, primary road pedestrian network, the primary utility network, the overall approach to stormwater management, the proposed development in open space areas uh, and buffer areas, and the proposed development standards that will apply to future development proposals. The staff would first like to point out that the applicant uh, did not apply, uh, did not include proposed space and bulk regulations with the submission. So the discussion tonight should really focus on the overall uh, design of the project. Uh, so just a few main elements uh, that I'll run through. Um, so staff did note that the applicant indicated that the development will include moderate to high density residential. However, these uses were not included on the master plan. So staff has recommended that they be added where appropriate. In regards to street design, uh, staff offered several comments related to traffic calming and enhancements to bike head mobility along Center Street and Main Street. So the applicant should discuss these with the board tonight. <coughs> Staff also pointed out the zoning standards require a network of interconnected streets within each plan development. It was unclear to staff how um, some of the streets in the development will result in meeting the standard. And finally, staff suggested the applicant discuss the required off-street improvements at a high level associated with the project, including the new intersection proposed along Highgate Parkway. The applicant should also provide an update on their DEP and DOT permitting processes. I'll turn it back to you. Thanks, Jamal. Um, just as an administrative note, um, we do not have Roger Beely tonight, so uh, Rick Perry will be a voting member if it comes to any sort of voting this evening. And then that, Mr. Bacon. Uh, thank you very much, and thanks again to the board for having this kind of workshop setting um, to have these discussions around master planning. I feel like we're getting into a, a sort of a good rhythm with what's, expect what's expected with master plan, with the master plan step. Um, Kind of working with the board through that process. Um, I think we're particularly excited to kind of be at the point to present this area of the project. We've um, been working for close to a year on attracting a key anchor to this area, which is uh, the WEX anchor, and partnering with the town on bringing that great kind of office end user um, to the downs and situate them in the, in the center of the project. So that sort of catalyst component uh, of the project is coupled with um, continuing to work on the, the sports complex, the edge opportunity, and associated development that wants to be 
is likely to occur around those, those anchors is really the reason we're kind of bringing this forward now, um, now that um, at least the wax component is, is very likely um, in underway. And um, as Jamal introduced, there's a fair amount to cover with the master plan, so we thought it was good to first come in with an application that covers the layout, the, the master plan layout, um, you know, where development would occur, where conservation would occur, the street layout, uh, infrastructure, the street cross sections, and that have a discussion this evening about that. And so we intentionally kind of held back the space and bulk um, to handle that at a, at a next meeting uh, so that we could kind of have a stepped process and, and have a reasonable amount of items to cover within one meeting. So this is a quick agenda for this evening. Um, and there's sort of buckets of, of topics that I want to present. But then my thinking is, I mean, it's a workshop format. So I'd like to just take one item, uh, present a few slides, um, have some comments, and provide some comments, and then have a discussion on each one, and then move to the next so that I'm not um, sort of talking, talking at you for uh, a long period of time. So if that works for the chair and for the board, I'd, I think it would be um, a good approach. So in terms of context and location within the project, and I've seen uh, the master plan, our, our inventory analysis, you've seen the number of areas of the project. Um, this outlines the context of this plan development within the overall, within the overall site. So we've <laughs> oriented now the downs um, differently. So the one is here, Titus Parkway is here, and Payne Road is here. Um, so highlighted in, in bluish green is the area that we're going to discuss this evening. And it's a large area. It's, it's I think, a little bit larger than the Innovation District um, that you reviewed in the past at 190 acres. Out of that 190 acres, um, a little bit more than half is proposed to be open space. Um, it's made up of a mix of, of wetlands and, and uplands. Um, so more than half is proposed as open space, and then around 90 acres is proposed as um, development area of one kind or another. So um, that really shows you kind of where on the site it is. Um, there's a large area, <coughs> essentially the highest frontage and, the, and a connection to highest parkway, which I'll talk about a little bit later. It's required in the zone. It's this area, uh, Willowdale Brook is here. There's an area on the west side of Willowdale Brook. And then there's um, the primary development area is north and northwest of where the, the inner track and the grandstand is today in the parking around it. So there's still a lease in place for um, the track and its operation. So this plan development stays out of that, that lease area where there's um, still an active business occurring. So the grandstand's here. Like I said, the inner track is here. Um, and it's really to the north and northwest of that. It also borders um, the Innovation District. This is the area up um, close to Payne Road, um, planned for more commercial type development. So um, it borders that area of the project in the, in the current scope we're down to. Any questions on geography? Um, <coughs> if I may yes. ask a question. Um, have you broken down <coughs> the 100 acres? You're calling it open space, but some of it is buffer, some of it is wetland. Has that been broken down as to what the open like space is? The different is types of open space? And trails and things like that. We have not, not to the acreage. Okay. Um, there, you're absolutely right. There's a mix of kind of larger wetland areas mm -hmm. um, that would be conserved. There's some upland areas, particularly off of Haggis Parkway, that um, we're going to leave as uplands, as conservation, that would have a trail, particularly along in here. And I can I have slides to kind of get into those details. And then there's buffer to Willowdale, and there's um, areas that are for more active use. Any other questions on location? So 
this slide kind of shows you that same geography. Now outlined in black is, is this 100, 190 acres, plus or minus. Um, and it shows you, this is the proposed road connection um, from Heidi Parkway. And it's, it's aligned uh, specifically to, to avoid um, most of the, uh, the wetlands and natural resources cross Willowdale Brook, where there's already a crossing uh, in place today, and gain access to this larger development area uh, north of north and northwest of the track. Um, in the greens are the kind of the wetland and the open space areas, um, and in the other shading is the, the different types of land uses we're, we're anticipating. Um, I'll talk in more detail about those in future slides, but we're we're planning out by Haggis Parkway, more of kind of a commercial focused um, area given the zoning um, around the site on Haggis Parkway and the nature of Haggis Parkway. Um, crossing Willowdale, there's uh, two development sites um, right at the gateway into more of a kind of town center north area of the project. Uh, this area here is a large tract uh, that's planned for the WEC site. That's really the office anchor uh, location within the project. And it's intentionally right on the edge of um, the, the start of what we see as the town center. So town center north. It's not all of the town center, because we anticipate uh, town center type development uh, integrating down by the grandstand as that uh, land use and, and opportunity changes in the future. Um, but it's so that you see the office has really kind of an anchor on the edge of the, the main street in downtown. And then as Jamal mentioned, uh, we're, create, we're starting and creating sort of grid and, and block system um, here in the town center. On this end of, uh, of the center is where we anticipate the, the sports complex, which would have a kind of a development side that faces uh, the downtown and Main Street, and then there's some fields planned, outdoor fields and rec area. So that's really the kind of the shading of kind of grayish uh, red to, to green, uh, transitioning from a more developed towards more um, open space and, and ultimately conservation along that edge there. Also showing how this phase, um, and I'll talk about road systems in a little bit, can integrate with future development um, outside of this planned development area. This is a question staff had in terms of, okay, kind of understand the layout here. How does that interconnect with future phases? So um, that's what these arrows are showing. We, have, we don't have a strict road layout yet, but we're showing how uh, the, the town center residential that you're currently reviewing the subdivision and, and we got a master plan for ultimately can kind of meet up with a grid system from the town center here and how those future road connections can be made. <laughs> Similarly, here um, is where we're planning Center Street. That would be the name of the street coming off the Haggis Parkway going to the center of the project. We'd go up to a point about here and then in the future connect up to the Innovation District uh, where we already have approved Center Street, which is currently a dead end coming off of the Innovation Way, and ultimately the, the current Scobar Downs Road will be continued to, to provide interconnected streets here um, in future phases. I'm going to show how that, that would happen um, as, uh, as we move into future phases and those road connections. In terms of um, these two areas, because they have different goals, and a lot of different kind of characters. We're proposing two different uh, districts when it comes to space and bulk standards and, and what land uses are likely. Um, in this beige color is the, the highest district, uh, we're here in the highest parkway, but we think that's more kind of commercially focused, consistent with the zoning on highest parkway. Um, it's also more constrained, so there's less opportunity to have kind of blocks in, in a grid road system. Um, and then the, the other area, the town center north, um, is highlighted, and that would have more town center-like space and bulk standards um, in land uses. 
and that this also illustrates the center street, the primary street coming in, and then how the downs really connect to it. Learning questions, yeah? Yeah, uh, it, it, tell me a little bit more about the crossing of Willowdale. Okay. Um, so the crossing of Willowdale, currently there are two existing crossings of Willowdale Brook, at least on Scubbard Ave's property. One is in this location here, um, where there was the old, basically, Hall Road um, that um, was established in the, the late 40s, early 50s. Actually, the Hall material to build the track from the pond to the other side of Parkway. So there's a cross, there's a wider established crossing here of Willowdale. There's also an existing <coughs> crossing exactly where we're proposing to improve a crossing um, that was more of a, I would say, kind of logging, um, less formal crossing of Willowdale that has a few culverts um, that are difficult, they in bad shape. There's also been impounding the water behind that crossing, given, given the situation. So we've been working with DEP and Army Corps for quite a while now about the best locations to cross. Um, and identify this one because it can make a significant improvement over the existing conditions out there in the stream by pulling out that eroding, eroded crossing, um, releasing the, the impounded water behind it, and Rich can talk in more detail as well and get into specifics, and bring that crossing up to um, federal and state standards in terms of what they expect. It's, um, is there any thought to creating a culvert across it or a bridge that would allow for the passage of significant wildlife under it. Because you, you do have that long corridor and it's a allows potentially allows for a good passage of wildlife from other areas of open space down through another patch of, uh, of wetlands. I, I know there are towns uh, um, couple of areas where they've created culverts or bridges that are large enough for moose to go under. So I doubt that we, I don't think we have moose, uh, we could, uh, I guess, in the, in the Downs area. But um, certainly, uh, certainly there are a lot of deer that are running through there. Uh, and if they have a passageway, there's less likely to be accidents. And I, I know the deer are there because they come through my yard, which is not too far away. Uh, and there are a lot of deer on the other side of Hikers Parkway. Uh, and their pattern is to, is, that I've seen is to winter in this area. Any thoughts, Rich? Sure, yeah. Uh, I'm Rich Jordan, I'm a Hi. wildlife biologist working with the project, uh, public with uh, Yeah, so. We took kind of a conservative approach. Actually, I'll go back. Uh, when working for the land trust on Warren Woods, I did find the moose antler in okay. the woods <laughs> at Warren uh, <coughs> six years ago. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so, so the, um, it's an open bottom arch. Uh, it's an open bottom box. It's basically a, a prefab bridge that they're putting in. And we had to design it to 1.2 bank full width standards to meet state and federal guidelines. And what that basically means, and it's difficult here because the stream's been altered, so to find what the real bank full width was, uh, Coral Palmer and my team went up and down the stream in both directions, um, working with Inland Fisheries and Wildlife, DEP, Army Corps, um, sort of getting their buy-in on this approach, found representative stretches of the stream that appeared normal, and they came out to about eight feet, was the, was the general width of the stream, both upstream and down. So the culvert is oversized for where it is, but part of that oversizing is to allow for, for critter crossing. Um, definitely a low flow, there'll be, we think the stream will probably end up being two or three feet wide of actually wetted width through that most of the year. There'll be periods when it floods, that's why it's so big. But we think there'll be passage. Is it deer or just raccoons? It's um, mm -hmm. coyotes. Uh, so Drew Gagnon, I'm with Goral Palmer, the project engineer for the Downs, and based on sizing, so we need something similar to like a 10 to 11 foot span, so based on that it would be close to a 5 foot tall arch culvert is what we're anticipating, which gives the open bottom and that would sit on some footings, so that would provide 5 feet of clearance from the street bed underneath the road. Okay. Ask a 
So um, the 1.2 bank full is for an aquatic organism passage um, requirement, but I think what Rachel's talking about is a terrestrial animal sort of passageway or corridor. So has that been added on to the aquatic organism passage requirement? No, like I said, we still went with 1.2. It's, if you go immediately downstream, it's actually more of a narrow stream channel. Okay. But we went quite a ways down and quite a ways up above the impoundment, okay. where it's wider. So what so is the... Fairly you, conservative. You say 8 feet was determined downstream or upstream. Yeah. What is it currently at, at this crossing? At the crossing? Yeah. It's ponded on upstream. Okay. Scale. It's yeah. impounded. It's totally yeah. impounded, okay. yeah. And the crossing itself, I waded through it in October. <laughs> Waders tried to find the original channel. But we can find it really well from old aerial photos. Um, so how are you planning to um, mock the substrate, or will it just be concrete on the bottom? No, it'll be, it'll be a natural bottom. It will be a natural yeah, bottom. Yeah, it's, a, it's basically a view. It sits in. It's more of a, it functions like a bridge. OK. So it's not a full box. It's more of an Correct. arch. It's an arch uh, sitting okay. on footings yeah. on the other side yeah. with a yep. complete That's good. natural stream bottom. All right. and. Um, and if I could ask a follow-up question also with um, basically just understanding that this area has been, for the most part, what we could call undeveloped or green fields. Um, and knowing that, uh, I don't, well, let me stop there. Are you all trying to meet green fields, or are we saying that this is any of this is redevelopment here? Because it, it'll make the, the, the permit standards different? Uh, in terms of stormwater? Yeah. In terms of site law and NERPA and everything. So we're treating this as new development, uh, basically because we're doing threshold designing, so okay. we can't do a pollutant Good. ranking for the post, so we're treating it as new development. Okay, so with that said, when you go from green fields to mm -hmm. new development type of thing, there's a tremendous amount of change that's going to happen in the watershed. So right now, the land is acting as a great, you know, sponge with that forested wetland there and things like that. And when you go and build on some of these areas uh, or make it impervious where it wasn't meant to be, there's going to be an aggregate impact to the stream here. And we're already, remind me, is Willowdale threatened? Yes. yes. Okay. So how do you, I mean, I think we've been talking about this quite a while here is how do you, and, and you know, DEP and Army Corps and others, they have a standard that you can meet, but it's the minimum. You know, 1.2 times 8 feet is the minimum that's needed. So how have you gone above and beyond to mitigate the impacts to Willow Hill Stream uh, and the overall ecosystem services that are there that will basically be wiped out when this comes through? So we have had a lot of conversations with the main department protection relative to Willowdale and Millbrook, which are both threatened, but they're not impaired. So they don't require any jurisdictional above effort than the site law, but we are going above and beyond by providing a melting period bypass system for the chlorides. So one of the big things with the DEP, and they came out with a memo recently discussing threatened streams, is the chlorides associated with salting the roadways and the sidewalks are really creating warmer and uh, worse environments for these organisms and fish to live in, in these streams. So what we're doing is we're providing a bypass system around our sonar facilities so that the immediate flush of chlorides will go through during the melting period and it will be the cleaner runoff will be recharging the groundwater to slowly bleed throughout the year into Willowdale. So what we're I would encourage you, I, that's great, and that's one aspect, you know, water quality, you know, chlorides, kind of thing. I would encourage you to keep a running list of these air, ways that you've gone ecologically, environmentally, even culturally, you've gone above and beyond the minimum. Um, because let's try to use, let's try not to use words like it's oversized by saying that it's multiplied by 1.2 but it's not oversized, it's meeting the minimum standards. So if we could try to avoid that, I would really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, let me again reiterate, um, reinforce something that uh, Robin said, and that we've seen in the past uh, when you get a lot of commercial or heavy development going in, um, all of a sudden the water 
starts to shift. And we saw that I'm coming off of the gallery. Um, and we still hear occasionally from neighbors downstream, now that there actually is a stream there because of that. So given what you're proposing here and the amount of larger construction that you're proposing, we could end up with something similar happening into Willowville Brook. So that's a kind of a heads up to be thinking about. Take a look at what happened at the gallery uh, and what happened to the brook downstream. Uh, and I'm, I'm with Robin here in terms of we have the minimum, but in Scarborough we really like to see more than the minimum. We like to like to see something that really gives us some assurance uh, that that stream is going to remain, is not going to move from threatened to something else, and that possibly actually cleans up both upstream and, and downstream. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I have another question about something else, Dan, and that is in, in all of these areas, have you set aside any of these areas for town uses? Can I, can I address that when we get to future plans? Because sure. um, I have some additional plans that show the open space areas, the development areas, et cetera. Okay. But good, good point. I'm going to jump into the concept plans. Um, this is really zooming in on, <clears throat> this is the conceptual master plan, which is, is a key component of your review. Um, and I've already introduced this to a degree. Um, but to get into to finer details, around development areas, open space areas, uh, et cetera. So we've been talking about the stream crossing here. We've been talking a little bit about stormwater management, which we get into in, in a lot of detail, obviously through subdivision and site plans. Um, and we can stay at a higher level typically at the, at the master plan stage. Um, I think as Drew mentioned, around stormwater management with the town center residential space. We have, and we can talk about more Monday, the gravel wetland that I think is pretty progressive, consistent with what the town's looking for, and it is going above and beyond where um, it's, it's using a, I think a technology that has a curious amount of treatment, typically, um, as opposed to other stormwater management types um, in that bypass system. So we can talk in more detail on that uh, on Monday, uh, but we're anticipating that likely could be it's also used in this case um, um, based on based on the benefits of that, that type of system. Um, so around stormwater, uh, we're intentionally in green space. We're intentionally um, using an area um, along uh, Willowdale Brook in this green area. We're off. We're intentionally offsetting development away from Willowdale Brook. Um, there's a buffer to Willowdale Brook. Then there's going to be an area for green space, multi-purpose path, um, kind of a boulevard type setting, as well as stormwater management. And that's uh, designed in here. Um, and it's intended to, to manage the stormwater from much of the development within the town center area so that there's kind of common uh, stormwater management um, that, that is to enable more of a kind of denser, more compact area uh, where there is development that is typical of the main street. So that's intentional so that we can create a good environment for stormwater, also create a good environment for actually creating a place that's walkable, buildings are close together, that's customary um, in a town center. Um, so that's, that's what's planned here, um, that would have public use that would connect to the, the, the multi-purpose path for planning the town center residential and would um, carry through the entire project from, from down here, which is off this master plan up, um, to the center of the project. And we're also planning it to continue up um, past the office uh, site and up on what is now the boundary. So that's sort of another thing that we're working closely with our important DEP on that the town should be aware of where we're planning on actually removing that, that existing roadway, um, which is pretty wide. I think it's on the order of 50 feet wide of pavement. 
and we're reconnecting those two large weapon systems through that, that removal. We're going to leave uh, a narrow band of payment so it can be a, a multi-purpose path so that people have access to it and use it for recreation. Um, but really enable these wetlands to, to come um, back together to have more interconnection hydrologically um, and to create a larger tract of, of open space but with some public access. Um, so that's the, the vision here. We need to figure out the right phasing of that because it's also important in the short term as a construction route to keep um, construction traffic off of new roads that we're building, off of new parts of the project that have residents um, and and also because this road won't be built um, fully uh, while wax and other components are under construction. So phasing, we need to figure out, but that's the intent there. Um, in addition to that open space, um, there's uplands in here that we're planning on tra to create trails um, to provide access um, through this larger open space area for all you know, users within the project um, and the public and um, connect those trails with sidewalks uh, along the street system. Um, and it's going to take future kind of programming, but if, uh, with Edge moving forward at some point in the future through site plan, um, our, our vision is to have um, ball fields back in this area that can kind of back up to a natural, uh, a natural park area along here and be a, kind of a nice natural edge to the center of the project. Uh, this plan illustrates, um, in addition to, to kind of storm water, which I touched on at a high level, um, at the master plan stage, it shows the direction of general of the watersheds on the site. And generally, um, this area of the project is going to be running to to, to Willowdale Brook. Um, the, the brake line is about where the track is. Here's, um, in addition to that, this also shows the other infrastructure um, plans for these two districts. So to serve this area by, uh, by sewer, there would be a new pump station that would be installed here. Um, there's a force main that would go out to Heidi Parkway uh, along this, this path, along the existing um, upland um, pathway, and the gravity sewer that would serve the entire district on this side of Willowdale, in the town center north area, that would be within Center Street, and then um, down the Scarborough, a uh, real line Scarborough Down. The development along the highest parkway would be served by sewer um, with a connection right up to highest parkway. So it would not go to the pump station. In terms of public water, um, at this stage in the project, there would become a loop system for public water, which is a zoning requirement. It's also um, a Fort Water District requirement. So the town center residential area would connect, um, the water would run up. Downs Road, uh, connect to Center Street, and would connect out to Heights Park Park. It's a pretty loop system. It also would extend um, to the east on Center Street to serve this area of the project. There will be other services down uh, on the, the other public streets. In terms of electrical, uh, we would have overhead power, three phase power coming in from Heights Parkway to this point here, um, as well as up the Downs Road along the, uh, the multi-use path to the west side of the Downs Road. And we're working on strategies for underground power along Center Street in this area, um, as well as the Main Street and the, the side streets. That also would be, um, there would be fiber provided in, the, in this the same configurations. Any questions on that? I have a question about the sewer access in the, the gap there between <coughs> where you're showing the sort of, I understand the gravity sewer, the long run, and then the section that's going out toward Pegasus Parkway, but it looks like there's a couple of lots in between. Um, 
or blocks, sorry, you're building them. Um, so I was just curious what you thought there was with those just these services and this. These here? Um, yeah. Yeah, there would be connections to the Downs Road and Center Street. Okay. So they would, yeah, they would be connected on this side of Willowdale and then go to the pump station versus out, to, out directly like Dan? Yeah. yeah. I noticed that you're, you're underground halfway through Block B and then you pick it back up for aerial on your transmission line. The way your drawing is, mm -hmm. wondering why you're bringing it back up if you already got it down. For power. cost reasons. Mm -hmm. For cost reasons. Well, you know, you're starting to get right down into the big city city center, mm -hmm. and is you are you anticipating having aerial wires in the more dense areas? We're not, no. So why don't you just keep it underground for that little bit? I think we would keep it underground to the point that it becomes less dense. And so that this area is currently with the sports complex um, mm -hmm. in its configuration. The, the dense area of this part of the master plan is, is this main street here. Um, these two blocks in the, in the first half of this block this becomes kind of the back side of um, the sports complex. So this isn't super precise in terms of where it goes from dash to, to mm -hmm. solid or where it goes from underground to overhead. So we've worked with the board on what is that right location based on really more kind of subdivision level information. Um, well, I'm just wondering because you're going to, there's going to be another uh, subdivision here where the, the outer part of the track is and the barns are. And I, I can imagine that's going to be pretty dense because that's... So I'm just, I'm just pointing out that I, I notice it's going back up and I'm wondering maybe we can just keep it down. What it's worth having good work. I'd like to see it stay down. I know we talked about leaving it above ground for the Downs Road for the major runs, but I, I too can foresee that future development areas being just as dense as what you're currently developed. So mm -hmm. you're already you're already on the ground part of that way. It's not the transition that we've done, it's class the line that we've done. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll continue to work with the board and look at what are the right locations. This this area of the project really isn't designed yet, so we don't have a good sense for how dense it is and what the character of it is. It's, um, so It's okay to talk about it. Fact, in, in, in my opinion. Yeah, and, <laughs> and, and I'll, I'll say this too, because I have a note, and, and this is a ways off, and I know it, but I think it's this kind of falls into what we're talking about here is when we get into the architecture and how you build this out, <coughs> we're really counting on you to have that 100 year view. I mean, this is going to be you know, the center of Scarborough for decades, you know, hopefully longer. <laughs> And if we have six-story office buildings in some of these areas, what do they see when they look at their windows? If we have apartment buildings, what? And the you know high, high transition power lines versus continuing underground. I'm going to tell you every time, 100 years from now, I hope they're looking out and saying, you know, they did a good job planning this thing. Yes. I like what I see from up here. You know, so thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, while we're, while we're talking about infrastructure. <coughs> Um, I'm just looking at the staff comments on the public water system. <coughs> if you address the comment there that it appears that the applicant is proposing the water main um, on Scarborough Downs Road and Center Street, staff recommends that the applicant extend the water main onto the other proposed streets within the development. Have you followed? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Our intention is there's going to be water mains on all the streets to serve development off them. Um, we should have shown that. We showed like the, there's the no primary dead ones. There's no. The dead end, there will be a dead end from this location up towards um, up towards the Innovation District for the time being. There is not development planned up here. Um, in the Water District, 
We've been working with them on locations where there's dead ends. There's dead ends today in the innovation district. So the long-term plan is this water, this water main here, gets extended and connects to innovation district. Um, but there's, it is a very long run without um, clarity on specific road alignment. So this, this length will be a dead end for a period of time. This area in here will not, nor will out to Heights Parkway. So. How does staff keep track of all these things? Like when we make these agreements, and how do you guys keep track of this? When we say, okay, this will be a dead end for now, but then how do you go back and make sure that those things happen? You know? Connection? Yeah. So the, they happen when development occurs in this area. Right, but, you know, just like, um, you know, that, that trail right there, you're saying you're going to connect, I'm sorry, uh, previously was the 50 foot wide road. You're now going to hydrologically co connect the both sides of that and put a trail, you know, like a trail in kind of thing. That has a permit sort of attached to it, but these other things, you know, these administrative things that we're talking about, and I know Portland Water District is involved with this, but, you know, I guess I'm just wanting, wondering and I'm looking at staff to say, like, how do you all manage all this? Because, you know, this is like 500 acres that we're <laughs> talking about here. And we're going to constantly come up with these like, oh yeah, we want to make sure this doesn't end, the dead end, and that dead end. So that's a, that's a lot for you guys to do. Yeah, and I think that part of that is, you know, part of this process is to be sure that, you know, sort of the master plan, each master plan area yeah. makes sense. And I think you saw one of our comments uh, reflected, like, why is there a certain piece seem to be missing? Yeah. And actually it actually looks like they might have integrated. So thinking about those sorts of things, but as this moves from master plan into subdivision, we'll have the road alignment, we'll know where uh, where utilities, where the planning board sort of approves utilities to go to, to terminate, whatever the case may be, and then as future, as the next phase comes in and goes through that process, that, that will be sort of a, will know where those utilities are at that point. So we know where a, yeah. a water main ends. Does that help it's answer sort of, part it, of the question? It's sort of maybe? answering it, you okay. know, Jay, and you yeah. know, maybe I need to talk with you offline or staff yeah. offline about this. But this is just a lot, a lot of stuff going on. And I feel like, you know, is there a way proactively mm -hmm. that we could start a punch list or some type of like you know, just sort of way to track it, and it's it's you guys. I know that you guys all do it, kind of a thing. But but you know, even from our board perspective, it's hard for us to come back in and say a year from maybe it's a year from now, and these come in front of us. I mean, how are we? We're relying on you 100. percent I've that saved all of the money. I have everything that's come forward. No, and I've had to it stop myself from <laughs> doing that. Trust me, because I totally get it. But. Um, I, I just, you know, th hearing Nick say things like, you know, 100 years from now, we want to know that it was done right. And then also sort of putting on, taking the blinders off and looking across Route 1 going, holy cow, there's a great Scarborough Marsh over there that we have on the front of our comprehensive plan that we have on our website that we really want to protect and make sure these things, whether it's environmental things, utility things. So, you know, I guess it can be rhetorical or just something for us to think about, like how do we track all these things? I'm going to answer on the water yeah. district. I mean, Jay Arnold is keeping track, of the water district is keeping track of every detail uh, in terms of where dead ends are appropriate and where they aren't. So um, we're putting in a 16 inch water main, which is 100 to a 200 year in terms of looking forward, it's a long-term investment that no other project didn't. I'm not sure. There's not 16-inch water mains serving the site right now. So it's sort of putting an infrastructure that is forward-looking in terms of capacity um, and resilient to the water district system and Scarborough system. So it's 
staff certainly has a lot to keep track of. The water district's helping keep track of those things because they're um, going to be very specific about where looping has to happen and also where shorter dead ends can occur. Recognizing phasing is really how this project gets accomplished. And when will you be doing your formal response to the staff comments, or have they been done already? After this meeting. Okay. It, what Robin brought up just reminds me of something that's making me increasingly uncomfortable as we go along with this whole process. Um, and that is the response that we kind of get on some areas. And I'm looking at a street, which I can't figure out what the hell the name is, um, Main Street, that looks as though it ends right at the downs. And the residential district that we looked at before has dead end streets that ends at the track. And uh, all of a sudden, we are now surrounding the track, and we don't have a good answer on what happens to the track. What I see in here, it talks about in the short time, in the short term. Uh, and yet, I haven't gotten a clear, and probably don't have it yet, but I'll just tell you what's bothering me. We don't have a clear vision of what's going to be in that vacant space other than we'll figure it out. But we're starting to come up with plans that surround that vacant space with dead ends leading into it. And that's where I have difficulty, as Robin brought up, keeping track because we've got dead end streets and dead end streets and dead end streets. And don't worry, when the track when we decide what happens with that, whether it's the track or the grandstands, then that will be taken care of. So it's, you know, hamburger today, hamburger today, hamburger yesterday, hamburger tomorrow, but never hamburger today. So um, Main Street bothers me because it's a dead end, just as the dead ends on the other side bother me. So you know, that's just simply no, I understand. what is um, really starting now looking at this, mm -hmm. creating some concerns. And that's one of the, I mean, the nature of the project is there's an existing business that has a year-to-year -year lease, and it's likely that the, the track business will be relocated in the next two years. I can't say definitively um, whether it's one year or two years, but it's in the short term. Um, Grandstand? But and the, the, grand, business. The, the grandstand. The business. The whole thing. I mean, the, is that the grandstand going to stay or come down? The use of the track, the business, the operation of the track. We have been studying for over a year uh, potential you know, architectural updates, reuse of the grandstand building. It's, it takes time to kind of figure out um, a repurposing of that, what that means from a structural standpoint, what it means from a design standpoint, what it means from an end user standpoint, like the, the economics of it, the aesthetics of it. So, But you're, you're developing streets that point right into it, and that's... Yes, we are. Yeah. Um, and the intention is that the grandstand building, in the long run, be redeveloped into a focal point within the project. Um, if it isn't, if the economics of that don't work, then the intention is that another significant building be relocated there. That, that be that location, that site be uh, replaced with another building that is a focal point. So, so, okay. so that whatever happens, once this decision is made, those streets pointing in that direction, they're actually pointing at something special. Correct. A, a new build, a, a focal point for for the surrounding areas. So that in five years, when somebody says, how come that street's still a dead end? Mm -hmm. um, that actually, nobody will be saying that because they will be moving forward. They will be going someplace. And that you know, goes back to Robin's question of how, how do we keep track, in some cases keeping track of a, a discussion like this that explores the possibilities. You know, if I could add another sort of <laughs> what if to the conversation. 2008, what if what happens next year? 
you know, and this whole thing stalls in a year, in a year's time. And then it gets and back burned. Right. The crop tells right. <laughs> and then it's parts of it get back burned. And these conversations are suddenly lost. Mm -hmm. um, or the, the sort of promises that that we've we've heard about whether it's you know mitigating stream and wetland impacts, not just meeting the minimum standards, whether it's you know dead ends of utilities, roads the like. Mm, th I guess this is the unease that I'm having too with sort of breaking it up uh, piecemeal. I think, for what it's, again, I think there's a leap of faith involved in all of our parts here. Mm -hmm. And we have to trust in each other as neighbors and stewards of this town that even though we may not be sitting in these chairs eight years from now, that there are going to be good people from this community that will be sitting here and asking tough questions and help hoping that they have the 100 year outlook. Mm -hmm. And that's, we have to take that look at it. Um, and I would think that we, they have the guidance from what we've said in a way to pass that information on to them. And, the, and you know, the council of the government, the staff hopefully, you know, passing the thumbs down as the years go by and mm -hmm. the information. And, well, Rachel's got our library of several downs. Oh, I, I do. <laughs> I, got it all. And I don't think this completely addresses the question of sort of what's happening, sort of, as I'm hearing the concern is sort of the, the um, Dan, could you go back to the slide that shows sort of all the master plans to date? If I remember right, you had that sort of early on. Um, it, as I recall the conversation not too long ago around the, 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 the most recent residential district, I can't remember what we call that, the town center residential, I think it was. Mm -hmm. If you remember, I think like in, in this round of staff comments, initially there were a couple of dead end streets and I think as part of the master plan process, it's really intended to give at least the conceptual build out of what needs to happen, the, the framework. <laughs> it may not be the, yeah. the final detailing because as we know that sort of happens at the next stage but it gives that framework, and I think as part of that discussion, that's where there was the inclusion of a, a street um, that's running, if you will, north to south, as we're looking at the page, that wasn't originally there, and I think that was part of staff's comments with, with this round as well, that, you know, okay, we're, we're showing it that what, what happens when, or if, to your point, you know, this is the end of it, right? And so the master plan, again, it doesn't, yep. it doesn't, exactly say exactly where the road's going to be and exactly where every piece of infrastructure is, but it starts to set the framework. Um, so again, that doesn't answer it. Again, we're not answering sort of that question about what's happening at the track, but I think that's part of what the board can do as you think about this master plan is, okay, well, if we don't know what's going to happen, are we comfortable with the streets, the street design we're seeing or how what might we set up? I know it's not. Yeah, well, the master plan is concept, and then it goes and it moves to regulatory approvals. So we go from this level of these are generally where the streets are going to go to a subdivision that shows, okay, these are the streets, this is the required interconnection, this is the area that, um, and there's phases obviously within what we're showing you. Um, and at that stage, that's when there's a requirement that X happens or Y happens. I mean, Army Corps and DEP <coughs> talking about, you know, when is this street removed? That's part of a permit that we get, and they indicate when that street's removed. Um, so, a master plan typically wouldn't do that. It no, lays out the framework. Sorry, excuse me, can I just respond? I get what you're saying, Dan. Mm -hmm. I just want you to you know, sort of put yourself back in your sort of Long Creek Board of Directors days where when we knew things were, things were getting developed according to standards and the standards weren't necessarily keeping up with the demand. And Scarborough's at a tipping point, I believe, as you know, we've, we've talked about this and, and how important this, this development is to the town and us to really think proactively and progressively forward kind of thing. And I guess hearkening back to your Long Creek days of knowing, is, is there something that we should have known like 
back in, you know, when, when we were developing out by the mall there, you know, to avoid what was happening there. Mm -hmm. And I'm guess and I'm asking you sort of as a professional to sort of, you know, sort of weigh in on do you feel like there's a way that we can move forward? You know, obviously we're going to because this is the process kind of a thing. But to ensure that this is going to meet all the needs of the now, capture and track sort of what we need to know what's going on in others, and, <clears throat> and, and still keep a, a vision to the future. I mean, it's a lot. I know that what you guys are doing is a lot. And I still look at staff and think, you know, I think of all the, the development that comes in front of the planning board and that they're, they're dealing with a huge onslaught of development in Scarborough, too. And I just, I want us to, to walk that, that fine line. And I really, you're the professional here, and I really look to you to tell us how we are going to manage, I guess, these competing interests. <laughs> I mean, there's, obviously, there's a lot of balance in this project in general. So there's goals for pretty much every best practice and planning. That's, that's one of the challenges with the downs. It's, we want economic development, we want affordable housing, we want conservation, we want complete streets, we want LIV, but we want a main street. I mean, it's... Yes, so can you give them? That's what I mean. That's what the project is. If this, I think this graphic illustrates it pretty well in terms of the different, and it's not complete. I know that's part of the concern is okay, how is it completed? But you have light industrial with conservation. You have a pretty successful first phase of residential as affordable housing that the town's never been successful with through private development, and now you have. Um, an office and user and a new kind of center that's balanced with 50% open space. So at the large level, I think this project so far is off to a great start in terms of balancing all those competing interests. It's setting, I think the concern is setting up the system to ensure it occurs in a phase incremental manner that um, is predictable, that can be tracked, that is, um, follows through on the commitments it makes. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy to continue to work on that. I think there's a lot of, I guess, the, the good thing for the town. Uh, it can be overwhelming for the developer sometimes, but there's a lot of other agencies that are tracking a lot of the things that <coughs> the town is concerned about. So it's there's a lot of backup to the regulations and the review process that, that you're going through. Not all but, of it, but right, a lot. But no other agency is looking at it holistically like the town is. Like when you go to IF and W, they're just worried about, you know, why well, you're bad. Yeah. And, and, and so, you know, I, it, when you say 50% open space, are you talking about the entire plan, Dan? No, or are you talking, talking about, about just this, our phase tonight? The space tonight yeah. is what I'm talking about. Yeah. But I guess in the back of my mind, it would be good to have those stats that say, you know, we're hoping to keep all of it 50% open space or something like so that we can understand where we are relative like tracking. to the big picture. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Happy to work yes. on master, yes. Yes. overall master plan when yes. we are, how yes. the residential came in, how much yes. square footage yes. commercial's yes. in. Thank you. Yes. That's something What's like the square that. footage of kind commercial? Of like What's the, the square footage of residential? Like, yeah. Right. yeah. At the bottom of our bags every week, we get innovation district highlighted. Yeah. That's, that, keep, that helps us keep a thumb on exactly. how much commercial development's going yeah. in. What we don't have is that nice map at the bottom of the bag that tells us we've developed, you know, 300 residential, you know, 100,000 square foot commercial. Right. You know, where we don't have that running tally of the entire project. And, and you work with it every day, so I'm sure, like, it's there for you. But, like, give us some cheat sheets <laughs> so that we can, we can, you know, you can, like, throw us the information yeah. and let, let me, make us feel smart. And let me give you an example. <laughs> um, in coming before us on Monday, mm -hmm. there are several applications concerning the downs, um, both residential and commercial, and each one used a different list of 
buildings either constructed or about to be constructed to determine the traffic impact. In other words, that the uplands, I think with the uplands, did not use Zoom Drain at Innovation District when they calculated. They they had a list of um, they had a, a list of those in businesses there, and they didn't they didn't have that. And then another, I think, the uh, residential area did use that. So just take a look at some of the contradictions within the development and within some of the packages that come to us. And it's very good that those two came to us on the same time, because I could say, wait a minute, something's missing between this developer and this developer. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you go from meeting to meeting, it's not always easy right. to keep track of that. Yeah. So that would be, that's the sort of thing that's very helpful. That's a good example. So, while well, we've veered a little bit off track no. here, I'm going to continue on the theme. So, <laughs> <laughs> you're cheering, you're doing it. Okay. Yes. I think it ties into the overall conversation, which is the only reason I'm going to bring it up at this point in time. When you look at, um, and this is what's nagged me all along, is this a self-contained development with all these interconnected streets and bicycle paths because we expect fully that the only people utilizing these spaces are really going to be the people that are living in this development. Or is this the center of the town? Is this the jewel in the crown of Scarborough? And, and, and that's what I keep going back and forth with because everything I see happening in there tells me that you're preparing for people to live, work, and play. You've said it a lot, right? Yep. But everything I'm seeing and the potential and the unknown with that track area and with you even outlining that there's going to be some big focal point there also tells me this has a huge potential to be uh, attracting a destination spot. Thank you. And if it's going to be a destination spot, I haven't seen yet, and you haven't pitched anything yet that would indicate it, but if it is going to be, and I think it's a huge potential to be a destination spot, how do you deal with the people who are coming in? You're, you're allowing for the parking and the green space and the people that live and work and play there. But what about the people that want to take their cars and go into town? And is it going to look like a downtown Williamsburg, Virginia, where you park everywhere around it and then everyone's walking around through cobblestone streets and there's restaurants, people eating outside, and you know you wander around on foot, but there's parking kind of circling that focal point. So I haven't, and I don't think you guys have really committed to one or the other, because you probably don't even know the answer yet. But I think this is what we're all kind of circling around. Is, is it a destination spot, or is it just kind of a, a self-contained mini community in Scarborough? And if you go back to some of the comprehensive plan discussions that we've had in this town, those big meetings, mm -hmm. the, a lot of the feedback was, we really don't have that community center, and a lot of people, I think, rightly or wrongly, kind of look at this as really the answer to it. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think as a, probably a development team, I think it would help a little if it was, okay, here's what it looks like if this is really just ends up being a self-contained community. Because that's what I see here, bike paths, walking, you know, it's great interconnectivity, people can go wherever they want, they live around here. But what if it's a destination? What are we doing then? Because it, it really could end up that way. And it maybe should end up that way mm -hmm. at, in certain areas. So I'm not asking you to map that no, thing I mean, out for I, me right now. I have an answer for you. I mean, in the center, yeah. the, in the beginning of is the town center north. It's intended to be both of those things. It's intended to be a destination. I mean, WEX makes it a daily destination for non-residents on its own. You know, there's going to be 800 employees initially, it could be 1,200 after a few years, every day, coming to the site. Yeah, maybe some are going to live there, but it's going to be a small percentage um, living within the project, even if we're su super successful in terms of attracting residents. Um, the sports complex, you know, whether the town is a, a, a partner or not, it's going to be, and it's intended to be a destination for um, all town residents in, in, in employees, um, but also visitors from from outside the town, outside of maybe the state, you know, in terms of going to a hockey tournament or a soccer tournament. So, in the Main Street area is intended to be an amenity for everybody, and I think what you're talking about, a 
town focal point of a nice amenity for residents within the project, employees in Innovation District, but also a, a, some type of destination. It's not likely to be Freeport Main Street pop down. You know, retail is not in that place right now, but an but a interesting special place. So parking is, we need to figure out a balanced way to handle parking. You know, we don't want to be repetitive and just have every site have its own parking, 100% its own parking. We want to have shared parking. We want people to park once if they are coming in and not taking the bus or what have you, um, and park once and do a couple things. And so, again, that's kind of, that's our vision. We need sort of site plans, maybe figure out kind of at that stage where the planning board can be kind of prepared to say, yeah, that shared parking works, that one doesn't. You know, we're all, we're kind of ready for that. We need a few more end users to, to get in front of you to, to do that down, down the road. But that's the goal is to, to, to be both, to be, a, to be a, a hub for Scarborough and also the region um, and do it in a way that's pretty appealing. That, that for me now raises another question. I realize we're going kind of further afield, but as we start to talk about that uh, track area or something there, plus Wex, uh, as, a, as a destination, uh, Wex certainly will be a destination. Not everybody who works there is going to live at the dams. Yeah, of course. How, what's the entrance? What, what's the major entrance? If, if the entrance is from Route 1, all of those people are passing through a highly high density residential area with <coughs> apartments very close to the street. Mm -hmm. um, if the entrance, if the destination entrance is on Hygus Parkway, which is a possible is more of a might be a better idea than getting people in for group one going all the way through the residential areas to get there. How do we get people to use the Hygus Parkway entrance, mm -hmm. um, which goes through much more of a commercial area right into Wex and the edge if, if they come in? Um, Payne Road kind of works for the innovation district, uh, but would it work really as an entrance for? The destination. So right. all, all of a sudden, I'm wondering if we've got the right entrances or the right, if if there's the right mm. thought behind that, especially off of Route One. So Route One's not intended to be the primary entrance to Wax. No so the commercial. So so the sign, the big sign, comes down, and it becomes <coughs> a road in, without, you know. Get to Wex here. Get to the edge here. It becomes. I don't want to speak about speak for the sign or its future. Well, but what, no, but, but what, I, what I'm saying is, it, it becomes less obtrusive, as less encouraging for people to take that way in unless they live right around there. Um, so, so, if it's going to be pain, if it's going to be pain road or Hygus, then the, those entrances become extremely important. In, terms of how they're presented and Absolutely. how people are encouraged to Absolutely. use them. So the, the WEX site in the commercial areas shown up here, which, which are in sort of the orange, you know, close to Hikes Parkway, where the office anchor is, is intentionally the closest sites to Hikes Parkway within the project. So we had, even though there's a large lease area for the indoor track, excuse me, the, the track <laughs> and the grandstand, there's other areas we could have tracked the WEX. It was intentionally uh, located closest to Hygus Parkway because it's uh, a straight movement off of exit 42. That's the majority of employees to WAX are going to be using the highway given where they live in the region. Um, if they're not, they're up, they may be using pain road. Even if they come off of Route 1, we want to emphasize Hygus Parkway as an entrance versus Route 1. You can drive up Hygus Parkway from Route 1 and enter uh, within the project. So as we work with staff and we go on prior phases, we're looking closely at the design of the Downs Road coming up Route 1, making sure that it accommodates the traffic but isn't 
designed to encourage speed, to encourage a lot of traffic. And we really intentionally have the least one end of the site, residential, residential, likely more kind of residential, transitioning towards the center. We focused on the lower traffic generators, the, the, essentially the kind of the quieter end of the project, and have been very deliberate around having commercial in the center be closest to Hyde Parkway, as well as commercial and light industrial close to Payne Road. The other closest site to Payne Road and, and Exit 42. And so that, that's very that's very helpful. Very helpful in terms of thinking about it. Though I want to know when the town is going to put a stoplight at the bottom of Scotto Hill Road, as all of this traffic now hits there. She sees that every. I know. <laughs> Dan, I have a quick question, and you may not know the answer, but I'm hoping you can give just sort of an approximation. Mm -hmm. Where you do have Wex um, agreed to come on board as a tenant, and you're sort of talking about them in terms of this block A. Just a little bit. Um, can you just give us a sense, because the scale of this is a lot different from maybe typical plans that we're used to looking at. What percentage of that orange box are we likely looking at for the footprint, the footprint of, of WEX in its entirety, both building and parking? Is it 20% of that? Is it 90% of that? Is it half? Some, some just it's probably 75% <coughs> of that. Okay. That was um, my they're planning a 200,000 square foot building. And we believe the town's parking requirements for that. Um, and so it's approximately 17 and a half acres. Um, their RFP, their request for proposals, last May, June, um, actually asked for, they asked for, I believe, about 25 acres. And in our conversations with them, and, and part of the reason they're located here is we're providing um, through master planning and through you know, working with the planning board a lot of amenities that they within the project that they otherwise would have provided on the campus. So they wanted trails, they wanted recreational amenities, they wanted open space, and so we were able to kind of get them to focus on a smaller land area because we're doing a lot of those amenities within the project. Um, so that kind of played to the advantage, I think, from a design and, and, and compactness standpoint, and also, um, you know, enabling them to kind of get their kids in, too, in terms of the site. Yeah, I was just going to say, I'm thinking of the main health building in, in uh, Westbrook, mm -hmm. they built that, and they put a parking garage right next to it. Is that something that they've talked to you about? We've talked about if they're a future, so they're a, very, they're a growing company uh, in, a, in a significant way. And they, this site appealed to them also for growth potential, you know, starting here and then establishing a larger presence as demands um, continue. Their Portland site can't accommodate that uh, at this point. Um, so we've talked about creative ways to, to grow on site, i.e. parking garage, um, that type of thing in future phases. Initially, we're not considering the parking garage based on the lease rate that they need to get into the site. Um, it's a, economics are entirely different to do a parking garage um, versus surface parking and the price point that they expect to be in, stay in Southern Maine. Um, the first phase is, is surface parking. Okay. So, uh, I don't want to get too deep into the particular tenant Central anchor business there, but I will point out that people will travel the path of least resistance in their vehicles to get to work. So whether that we like them to go to high units, or if they're coming off the 295, they're coming down Payne Road, and they're gonna probably hit that Downs Road. Which I wanted to know why not make the private entrance? It's already built out on the Downs Road into Wax. If you're gonna have people coming from 295 Payne Road. And not that I don't want to engineer this or draw this up for I just want to know, had that been considered, and you can do with that piece of commentary as you, you wish, 
The other part is you mentioned earlier on that you wanted to carry that green space all the way down from residential into this nice, you know, pond area, and then, and then also we're going to hit some really busy intersections. But you still want the connectivity of the green space. And have you considered pedestrian either underpasses or overpasses? So anyone biking or running or using a path along there isn't stopping at busy intersections or trying to dodge cars, really just kind of continue on their way. If you've ever been to Fenway Park, you go down to Starbucks. Park. You know, they're running along the Charles, and it's all kind of nice. You see the pedestrians all making great use of it, and I, I see the potential here at, on this parcel to be able to kind of do that. But having people, at it, this is going to be a busy area, you know, having people stop at the corners trying to dodge traffic to cross or run or bike, want to know if you'd consider underpasses, overpasses for pedestrians in any of the discussions you've had so far. So they can just continue to enjoy that open space. Yeah. Um, we haven't considered it yet, because we're looking at this from a phase standpoint. Um, but we, I think the underpass would be pretty challenging given the level of groundwater in, <laughs> in this area of Scarborough. Um, I mean, that could certainly be a phase thing to, to look at overpass. Um, I guess we'd be pretty successful if we have traffic volumes that, that get to that level of concern. Um, I know the town's talked about how to deal with the crossing route one. It certainly isn't going to touch that in terms of traffic generation. Um, but yeah, I mean, we want to design our crossings to be very safe and very pedestrian friendly, and we want to link together our, um, you know, our pathways for sure. Um, in terms of this being a private entrance, um, that idea has certainly come up. It, it gets back to the balance again. It's like, what are you designing for? And you know, Rich is sitting here and is a big reason that we've been thinking about pulling that really out and enabling um, the natural resources to kind of come back together to an extent, while also providing a rec path. And that's pretty appealing to the environmental agencies. And so, you know, that so far that's been the primary goal in that location and not, and, and not always catering to, to traffic, you know. And so, again, it's some choices around design and, and trying to be balanced. Um, that's, that's why we're sticking to right now kind of looping around that area. Um, if I could add on to that just a little bit. Um, Nick, were you talking about coming up the downs or from Route 1, not necessarily that private entrance, right? You were talking about where they were coming in residential from Route 1? Uh, no, if they're, if they're, I mean, they're, they're, talk, they're, 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 they're... You were talking about it's that. It's an existing road, and okay. it leads right to the site. So yeah. I'm, okay. I'm just sitting there questioning, like, you can, people off of 95 probably will go straight and take the left, you yeah. know what I mean, yeah. down high. But if you're coming from the mall area, because that's where 295 is going to drop you, yeah. um, you're probably coming down to Sherwood down here. So. Yeah. And I was concerned about the down road coming yeah, through there where you have en the enterprise sort of industrial part there that you could, I don't know, think about. Um, the other thing I guess I was I was sort of thinking about, I think Nick is right, people will take the path of least resistance and find their own way in. Um, but I would hate for us to miss an opportunity for some, public, some P3, some public-private partnership, whether it's a parking garage or these overpasses that he's talking about, because if this is going to be a regional hub or destination location, all the more reason to have a parking garage, I believe. So, you know, it could be a, you know, a, a public-private partnership somewhere down the road. Um, you know, because when the West people go home, that's when the concert starts, you know, they the same mm -hmm. thing, <laughs> Civic Center kind of thing. So, I just want to put that no, I think parking garage would, we, if the town center is that successful, right. um, and, we'd yeah. love to have a parking garage. It's, it's, you need to get to a critical mass to, to pull it off. Um, but we also need to think 100 years ahead, right. right? whatever. So, you know, I want us to, I'm going to just keep pushing. I also don't want to see a whole phase dedicated to parking. Yeah. <laughs> well, it would probably be easy to oh. view. <laughs> oh, God, is there going to be a restaurant? No, no. Right. Uh, so There's I, tremendous opportunities for shared parking too in the initial phases. This is a it's designed to be very walkable. You can park once and do a variety of things. So I mean, 
and, and heard reference to a hotel. And I don't know, you know, if that's going any place, but there's the opportunity for, for sharing a parking garage between Wex and a hotel if there's in any sort of propinquity. Um, that would be an opportunity because the hotel needs a lot of a lot of parking. So if one is actually you know, on the horizon in there, now's the time to think about it. Is that the high density residential use? <laughs> I just wonder how long that is going to go. The high density residential use. Do we know? Yeah, I just want to get back to the slide that's helpful. Um, so the the idea around residential is that as this customer kind of centers is, is having upstairs residential above a commercial space. So. Um, we don't have immediate plans for that, but we want to, through the master plan, enable you know, the first floor retail, first, first floor uh, restaurant, office, and then um, housing above. So that's that's envisioned. Would that be in any one of those blocks particularly? Which, which block? We would envision that being like the opportunity for it in the, the blocks along Main Street. So really these two blocks here, um, this being the wax site is being edge, so really in, in these blocks is where having a component of housing makes sense um, from our perspective. Um, and you know, the zoning allows residential in the entire district, um, so we don't have specific end users figured out for every block or every site. Um, we, we do. But when you make your proposals to others, like you did for WEX, you're putting it in there that, like, oh, we need to have a high, den high density population and things like that. I mean, that's just. Look at the people who can walk yeah. to work. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So I think there's opportunities in, in these blocks in particular um, for, for housing that fits in a center. So it would be more, um, you know, sort of more multi family apartment style. So I don't want to put an artificial time frame on this workshop, but I do would like to see us out of here in under two hours. So if we can um, maybe go through the rest of your presentation, Absolutely. and then um, I know we probably covered a little bit of it, but um, staff and the board I'm sure want to know about the main elements and how you're addressing some of the main elements that were outlined in staff comments. So yeah. We, I will do my best to behave and stay on track. Not the promise. <laughs> Um, okay, so I think we've talked about a few of the main elements and I need to be reminded. Um, so maybe, maybe you can just about mention that on uh, Hector's Parkway is just a small, yeah, uh, to, the, to the right. Yeah, what is that? This here? Yeah. That's a small parcel that would have direct access to Hagus Parkway. Yeah, so but I, is that... Is there any thoughts as to what that would be? I know we've heard about the lodger block. Um, that's kind of a strange. So far, that's that's more it's kind of standalone commercial. Um, it's about an acre and a half, two acres of, of um, land. It's also where you would have a trail connection out to that site. Um, the sewer uh, force main could be out to this. That, is there would be a problem with an entrance way? We need to work with um, the DOT on access um, because that's that's an upland area that's isolated from the rest of the site. Um, so we need to work with them on an access point to enable that to happen. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think in terms of. Jumping ahead, we've talked about a, a variety of things. Um, street cross sections, and um, we have a little bit more work to do on that around the center street. Staff brought up the idea of similar to Scarborough Downs Road, um, narrowing one of the lanes to 11 feet versus 16. So, what we've done in a few other locations is to have a five foot shoulder bike lane. 11 foot lane, 11 foot lane, 5 foot shoulder. Um, 
And so on Center Street, particularly as you get further into the site, closer to Lex and to the town center, um, doing 11 foot lane, 11 foot lane, and bike lane, and, and eliminating one of the bike lanes and doing a multi purpose path. So we're open to exploring that with the board if any sort of decided to do on Discover Downs Road for traffic calming reasons, also to provide that multi purpose path for walkers and bikers. So um, happy to look at that and, and see where that makes sense to start it on Center Street. Um, can you, can you just highlight on that schematic where Center Street is the long one? Center Street's the street that's going to connect to Highest Parkway. So it, okay. it goes like this, and it goes from Highest, intersects with the Downs Road, or the future Downs Road, where it gets realigned. It goes by the west side and Main Street, and then ultimately it connects up to Innovation District um, at a future phase. So we're thinking that to kind of change to that cross section may make sense at the first entrance drive into the two sites off of Heights Parkway. Um, Can you uh, just recall for me, what is it that leads out of innovation? What's the, uh, is it going to match up when you get to Center Street actually does go and connect into innovation way? What, what's that cross section look like? So there would need so that this spot is there. What's that right here. Like coming out of there? So that is a um, that has two two bike lanes on it right now. So it's it's eleven and five on each side. And that's so that proposing would need, to carry throughout the whole. No, staff suggesting and we're we're fine with it transitioning to in this area where it's kind of denser, more walkable, where you want a uh, multi-purpose path in this area at least to have to, to change that cross section. So we can convert back to the innovation district cross section. You know, it could be somewhere in here in this in this phase where kind of the character of the area changes from kind of the center to <coughs> towards the light industrial area. So that an intersect maybe future intersection would be a transition point. Mm -hmm. It could. Okay. Um, I mean we're transitioning down here already from the first residential phase into the second, where we're picking up the multi-purpose path, this is where it starts in this. So we're, we're doing a, a similar transition here, um, and can, can do that up here, wherever it's deemed to be appropriate. So you're, you're, what you're looking at moving forward is, is having dedicated on-street bike lanes outside of the densest area, is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's, yeah. We, we have that now in terms of the approved plans under construction coming in off of Pain Road, going through Innovation District. It's built like that coming off of Route 1, and then you get into the denser residential that's under review, and it transitions to what we just talked about. So. It, you know, out by Haggis Parkway, there's going to be, and I have a slide on that, there would be a, a right out and a left out, and a left turn lane in. Mm -hmm. So that first section um, of street, center street, mm -hmm. coming in from Haggis Parkway, it's probably appropriate to have a shoulder there. Who knows where there's turning movements, but then you can transition into a narrower section once you get into the site. And if I might, just as part of the conversation, one of the um, sort of elements came up that as Dan's talk, sort of uh, talking about Center Street as it comes through sort of the downtown area is keeping it sort of, if you have 16 feet of pavement, even though five of it might be striped, it could allow for, because it's a fairly straight shot, pretty high speeds where you're coming through a denser area. So we said, well, maybe we could just allocate the same allowance of space for bikes and heads but potentially narrow up the paved way, uh, I'm sorry, not the paved way, the, um, the travel way, yeah. so it at least, you know, maybe we're not changing the alignment of the street, but we're giving you that sense, that perception, particularly when you start to add in street trees and those things, things are starting to close up. So that was some of the thinking um, as we started to have the conversation with public safety folks. And um, so that's what 
threw it on the table and see what comes out the other end. No, I mean, that, that's, that we're aligned with that. For sure. yeah. In that section would be have on street parking, which also can add traffic calming. Um, so both of those things can work fine. Um, <clears throat> I mean, some of the other staff comments, and we've talked a lot about kind of dead ends um, and phasing of them. We also, through subdivision review, we want to avoid dead ends in general. So, I mean, we anticipate, anticipate you know, for example, this block can be a phase and there would be no dead end. You know, the master plan showing ultimately this whole area. So, well, through why phasing, not, we why can not work show on the that. next leg as well? Where is that? Here? I, yeah. We show that on this plan. So we're, we're, we're updating these plans. I mean, the, one of the sensitivities that we have is there's a lease in place for a few more years, and we're sensitive to how much we show in that lease area. Sure. So that's why we showed it this way. Um, we could very well, I mean, we'll add that to the master plan like we did with the last master plan to show that it won't be. It's a timing issue, not a, we don't want to build any connected streets issue. Yeah. Um, like some of the thoughts that I was having earlier when we were talking about sort of keeping track of the entire, you know, not just uh, phase by phase, but, you know, the, the whole entire project um, was one of the things that I tend to keep in mind when I look at these things is just, you know, <laughs> Not to be a doomsdayer, but like, what would this look like if if nothing beyond this phase ever happened? And I hope, and I'm sure we all hope that's not the case. But we can't predict the future either. So you know, to some of the comments made before about um, dead ends for both, uh, you know, certainly utilities and um, conservation or uh, you know, protections for sensitive areas. If, if those aren't you know, just making sure that sort of as a whole, each phase could be standalone if needed, um, and maybe not forever, but maybe for like a long time, because we, we don't know that. And so this was another, the point I actually pulled out the same material that Jay was just describing about the last residential phase that we just looked at, where you did come back later on and say, okay, you know, we will now include in this, um, portion of the master plan, this connecting link. And, and so that, to me, just makes it look a little more um, <coughs> cohesive and sort of standalone, but also certainly designed to support the, um, the thoughts that you had earlier about you know, what the through connection will look like there um, someday. I, we travel to um, the general Seattle area a couple of years ago. My husband was out there for training and so I dropped him off and there was like, I don't know, for some reason I went into this development that was up behind the facility he was in and it was very clearly <laughs> something that had like been built to phase and then everybody packed up and left for whatever reason. Maybe it's under construction now, I don't know, but you know, literally the same thing, like, like little stub roads to the woods um, with no, you know, trailer or anything like that, and and you know, I certainly understand that there's an element to development that um, includes that no matter what. But just you know, in the interest of talking about what this phase would include, I think making um, including legs like that to sort of complete those two blocks instead of just the one and a half, I guess is is, um, mm -hmm. is what I that's what my brain wants to see. I, there are some other um, lines drawn on a lot of these schematics that I interpret as being sensitive to you know, ongoing operations that are happening on the mm -hmm. site, and I'm sure that that's um, you know, a balance that you talked about to have to work with. But. Um, so we talked about traffic a bit. Um, I mean, we are continuing to work a lot on opportunities for transit, um, and at this stage is, we have it serving phase one, um, we're working on planning, you know, what are the opportunities for partnerships, 
um, to enable it to, to come to the site in future phases. It's you know, a project on its own, can't necessarily induce an entirely new route. <laughs> Um, we got them to serve phase one because they were serving route one, you know, and they converted into phase one. So we're working on sort of a, a program um, to kind of work our way towards attracting transit given, given a wax, given these other larger kind of end users that can establish a critical mass. So that's a work in progress. We want to locate bus stops and maybe a, a transit hub um, in the project, we're a ways off from like picking locations and, and, and figuring that out specifically. So that's something that we can't do on our own. We can play a big role, but we can't do on our own to, to have it happen uh, immediately, but we're, we're working a lot on it. Um, Steph had a question, a, a good question about I mean, the status of this connection here through Block A. Um, this was it's shown as a, a right-of-way. It, it could be a future public street if development occurs here. This isn't part of our site. So we want to show connections to neighboring sites to interconnect. Um, you know, there's potential for, you know, this um, is likely to gonna end up as part of the, the WEX deal with the partnership on WEX, which isn't, um, which isn't the downs. Um, per se, so we're showing that as a potential connection um, to enable that site out of the crossroads to be developed. It could be a street or it could be a, a driveway because it's part of the same lot. You know, it could be an, an office park where it's you know really just a driveway and it's shared parking, or it could be something more. So that's the the intent there is we don't have more information on what exactly it should be, but we want a connection. Um, I talked about Center Street. Um, in terms of the connection to Haggis Parkway, um, we are before DOT with a permit for the kind of traffic and impacts for the next five years, um, just based on our forecast of what could happen in the next five years. And we're <coughs> working on a design for this intersection. It needs a left turn lane uh, into the site. Um, it's been located deliberately to be as far away from the connection to Beacon and Gateway as possible for, for stacking, but also <coughs> so far that it impacts wetlands. So there's this window of where it can go, and this is really the, the best place for it from a, from a capacity standpoint and a planning standpoint. Dan, is, um, that, it, uh, is that coming out across the street from the um, property that Kerry Anderson has yes. that's got an agreement for yeah. three Three uh, industrial buildings? Yeah. yeah. So that's right. Okay. And we've been working with them on sort of how their driveways relate to this one. Um, and that that does raise the question of why yeah. not a stoplight? Why not a signalized? Especially since we're talking about maybe that being the main way for wax and blaze. Yeah. We're so designing say 600 people through there. Right. Uh, we're designing it. When, with the widening, we're going to put conduit in, we're going to make it signal ready, but it doesn't, under the forecast for the next, for what we're applying for the DOT permit, which includes wax and a fair amount of else, it doesn't meet warrants, like the, the DOT determines whether you tri trigger warrants for signal. So it doesn't meet signal warrants, but we're going to make it signal ready, um, should, should it meet warrants in the future. So there would be a left turn lane, there would be a left uh, and a right out. That's what's needed based on uh, generation of projects. I think <laughs> I'm going 45. Stop it. Besides that, I know where the police wait. You, you might think of me. Um, I, I have some concerns simply because of I know what kind of what the traffic is like now. Mm -hmm. Right. So we're in front of DOT in, in the town with there's at least eight traffic engineers looking at. I think a lot of people use Haggis Parkway because there is no light on it. Yes, so. probably. Well, no, the direct, the, the all of the trucks are directed down Haggis Parkway to the straight yeah. down there to the um, uh, the 
95. I think you're right about safety, but I think you also part of living in a scar not just Scarborough, but part of living in a small main town is not we don't have so many lights, in my opinion. You know? People tell you the worst thing about Cape Elizabeth, where I grew up, is the two lights that they put in. You know? So, so. Um. so I guess the other component, and I know we want to wrap up soon, is like we talked about the introduction, we're going to work on space and bulk standards for two different kind of contexts and, and districts. Um, working with staff for recommending we totally agree to have the Hydras Parkway area kind of relate well with the zoning for Hydras Parkway uh, in terms of setbacks, especially for the Hydras Parkway, there's a landscape buffer requirement and building setback requirement. So we're going to be putting that together um, very shortly and working with the change now on that. And then the town center district is really going to be you know, to enable that kind of walkable center, that mixed use center that we've been talking about. Um, and not the only, well, not the only, but um, in terms of agency reviews, I mentioned the DOT TMP process. We're working through that, um, have been for a while, and because of and trying to be comprehensive, we've applied for kind of traffic generation of not just an office building or an edge, but the next five or so years of projected um, traffic and other transportation needs. So it's a lot to, to kind of look at and sit through. And as part of that, the plan is to come up with getting back to phasing, sort of phased improvements. When certain things happen, certain things are done in terms of, of improvements. And obviously, mm -hmm. Center Street Connection Heights Parkway, this intersection is done. Um, and as different end users come along, there are different requirements because you, you obviously hit certain thresholds for, for needing to do transportation improvements. So that's going to be put into a package that we want to relate well with phasing of subdivisions and for the board. Um, so there's, there's a pretty good roadmap for what needs to happen when certain things come in. On the DEP and Army Corps side of things, the environmental side, um, we've started our conversations with DEP on this area, like we are with you, like because they're doing the same type of process where we have the overall master plan and then we come in area by area. So we had a recent meeting with um, Aubrey and April and the staff there, and we're going to be reviewing, working with them and. and going through that process with storm water and, and wetlands and other site law requirements concurrent with kind of subdivision and site plan for this phase like we've done in other phases. So those are initiated um, to be on the same timeline and to work dovetail with your review uh, during subdivision and site plan, uh, particularly for the WACs, that's the, kind of the lead application. So, Yeah, I, I still don't have a sense of where we're going to put the town uses. And I, I guess uh, by that I would mean, um, given all of the residential, uh, there might be a need for an elementary school. Uh, their land's going to be set aside in this area or another area uh, for the town to build what it needs. Um, the town is starting a study around the primary school, um, not in response to this project, as far as I know. Um, and that study process has an architectural firm. I don't know, maybe there's proposals going out. It's in process. Um, and they, I think they're doing some site selection. I'm Are you referring to what campus? the consolidation of the? No, I, actually, I'm, I'm referring to the fact that is. We, we, we're talking about 10 and 15 and 20 years in this in this area, and at some point the town may need want to put something in there. They may the town may be interested in putting in its own community center, defining community center different than than the edge. Might want to put in an elementary school, 
uh, might want to put in a um, fire station. Not something necessarily that we can anticipate, but there's so much, so many acreages, so much acreage here, so much, so many things going on that it's possible that the town, it's quite possible that the town would want some of its own development, uh, whether whether it is a park, it's an elementary school, it's a small community center, it's a fire station. Is there any thought to setting aside land, or has there been that discussion, to setting aside land for the use by the town? I don't think that probably to do that. Uh, I mean, so I understand it's a good idea, but this is, they got a pretty significant investment in this area. So I don't think they can sell it. Well, there, there have been discussions, uh, you know, we, I see comments in here about town uses. So I would like the uh, definition of town uses. If you're defining town uses as a trail that people walk on, okay, um, a ball field, a recreation park that's not the edge, what exactly, what part of this, the, the town center is all private? What's public? I mean, it's all privately, private businesses. It's all commercial. What part of this is actually Scarborough Town? So the town right now, it had a community that spent close to six months looking at participation in the sports complex. And now this mm -hmm. conversations are ongoing. The council's going to begin considering whether community center is a component to that. So that's before the town right now um, for deliberation and consideration. Um, in addition to that, if the town council or the town decide not to move forward at this time, there is a commitment to reserve some space for a future community center within the project. It hasn't been, because the first conversation is ongoing, we're not identifying a location for sort of the but, but, but what you are saying is that there is a commitment in some way to... Well, there's a five-year period, too. Uh, it's not a zoning um, requirement. It's a credit enhancement agreement requirement to have a five-year period to decide whether the town has a community center within within the project, whether it's part of the sports complex or it's a, a separate initiative. So that's... Okay, so, but it's not in this area that we're talking about? Let's say it's not, let's say the commitment, they don't want the edge. Let's say that sure. for whatever reason. So then there's a commitment for space for the town mm -hmm. to develop its own community center, and that commitment is good for five years, and it might end up being an elementary school instead of a community center or a fire station instead of, you know, we don't know. What you're saying is that, that is not coming in this part of this plan. It right. would be in that back area in between innovation and... I would expect that it would be in the center of the project, potentially. Um, so if it's an elementary been, school, they need about, what, 10 acres? They all, it has to be, it has to be one level. So it usually takes a lot of space. Mm -hmm. So I think the town's ongoing process also is going to be influencing the outcome of that too. I mean, I, I think if the town doesn't consolidate a primary school, I'm, I'm going to be building a capacity imagine. But those are outside of the the place that we're right now. In terms of other community uses, I mean, we're under the zoning, we're to provide um, you know, parks, green space, active and passive recreation. I mean, we see Main Street, the beginning of a Main Street, being a public space um, that's also um, has an appeal and has use potential by, by the community. Are you planning any, or is there any sort of plan on the horizon for um, a park that includes play equipment? As we, as the lots get smaller and smaller, it's not just having some green space with a couple of benches, but where are the children playing? Right. We've been thinking about, you know, we haven't gotten to a stage where we can site plan the sports complex. There's a lot of variation in terms of 
the size of it. If the town's a partner, it's a, a much bigger facility, and, and that'd be great. Um, if it's not, it's a smaller facility. So we haven't, we're not at the point where we can do sort of site planning for that, but there's been a lot of conversation by our team that kind of regardless of that outcome, that there could be a park that is part of that complex where it's um, kind of integrated with that, where there's play equipment, where there's outdoor space for active recreation. So that's really been the place so far that we've been thinking makes the most sense, um, which is not at a point that we can design it. Have you made any arrangements for dog parks? I, you know, I know there are a lot of trails, but one thing you don't want is people <coughs> walking their dogs along there and that's it. We have, we've talked about it, we haven't identified a site um, okay. at this point. No. So, Dan, you've had a, quite a bit of feedback from not only staff, but from this board so far. Is mm -hmm. there anything that you need to walk away with tonight for either guidance or clarification as you go forward and refine this? I think I've gotten a lot of good guidance this evening and some feedback on staff comments. So I think we have a pretty good handle on how to address staff comments and, and some of the board feedback. I mean, a lot of it we're aligned with. You know, it's, it's being clear on some of the plans um, and making some adjustments in street cross sections. So I don't think I need uh, a lot more direction from you. Uh, I, I mean, what we're hoping to, or planning on doing next, is to respond to staff comments and board discussion, you know, um, clean up this aspect of it, and then really kind of focus on the space in bulk, because we want to kind of work through that. Um, we have some good ideas on that. We'll work with staff on kind of getting it in, in good shape um, before you review it. And that's, that's really the, those two things are our, kind of critical path um, because you know we're working with Wax as an end user, they have certain expectations around, okay, mm -hmm. where does their building go <laughs> uh, on the site, um, how it works for the site. I think we have some good ideas on that, but space and bulk is needed to nail that down. Um, and so we're gonna be working thoughtfully but sort of efficiently on that so that we can work with you on that so that we can move to the next step with, with that really key end user. That's, that's critical to us to have sort of the rules to, to follow so they, that site can be designed. And staff, do you have anything that you want clarified or cleared up or guidance on what we take our way this evening from the board? Not at this point. I think, as uh, Stan said, getting together before their next submission will certainly be helpful to sort of work through some of these things um, sort of around the table rather than through back and forth memos and such. So, uh, more, more FaceTime? No. Yep. Yeah. Are we going to have another one of these like workshops? I think that's the plan. Um, okay. If the board's comfortable with that approach. That would be good because it would be nice to see. Not that you asked me yet, Mr. <laughs> Chair, but um, it would be nice to see some, I think, responsiveness from sort of what we've asked here tonight too about you know the tracking of the phases versus versus aggregate amounts of disturbance or land area created that we were talking about at the beginning, as well as that sort of parking lot list that we talked about, Dan. Like, how do we? Let's not forget about this. But also, the things that we didn't touch on tonight, such mm -hmm. as making sure we have robust buffers to protect natural resource areas, and street trees, and place making. So if we could just <laughs> keep it on the agenda that we didn't go through necessarily, I think, everything here. But I'll look to, to, to maybe your comments will address some of these too, yeah. Dan. But I was hoping to have larger discussions I mean, about, about we place off making. Like for, for the sake of time, I, I really got to get going. So. Well, and I think too, um, kind of like with all the applicants that we see, they'll come before the board, they'll go back and kind of talk with staff a little bit more, and some of these comments kind of go away a little because they've worked it out in the plans, and 
and then some of them still remain, and that I think is a great opportunity for us to revisit buffering. If buffering is still an issue, we should be tackling it next time we see this plan. So mm -hmm. um, hopefully that's somewhere between staff and the applicant not coming to the same uh, mindset on what, what it should be. We, we do get a chance to take another stat out. Um, I would be remiss in my duties if I did not ask the general public if they had anything they'd like to add to this. Mr. Cameraman? It was. Yeah. <laughs> She's gone. We're dead out of the room. I, well, I just have a question on uh, schedule a little bit with in terms of the DOT permit. Do you have any sense for when we might be able to see, and I, I understand the list that you laid out of sort of, you know, tied to different uh, thresholds of development will be X, Y, and Z type offsite mitigation. At what point are we apt to start seeing some of that? Because right now, um, it's just a little bit unclear and also hard to imagine that even this phase could go forward without off-site work um, in addition and beyond just the entrance on the Heights Parkway, for example. Mm -hmm. I have a call away from any traffic engineer. Uh, on Monday about specific schedule, but I mean, it's, it's going to be basically the next three months of kind of work that they have um, working with the reviewers and kind of coming up with a phased plan. But, um, and if, if I might, if, yeah. if I think, Jennifer, if I may, what, what I sort of heard the question be right now, really the only off-site improvements we've talked about are the, inter the three intersections. I think the question might be, is this the phase that puts us over that threshold where there might be other off-site improvements that get looked at you know, when you start to look at the, what, what triggers us to get the next threshold of a traffic movement permit? If I'm sure most board members will remember, but I'll say it again. They have an original traffic movement permit that's up to 99 trips and then there's some rules about you can slide a little this way or that way and there were some modest off-site improvements but we talked about there's going to be a point where obviously we go over that and into the next so I, I think maybe Jen is that your question what is this the is this the phase that takes us to that next level and that the board when you submit the formal application will have a full traffic impact analysis really about this phase or and beyond but there's certainly with new capacity coming up by this parkway, there's going to be the intersection built. There's also likely um, some improvements at extra 42 in terms of lane alignments, et cetera. There was, with the innovation district permit, there was pretty robust signal improvements that we're doing that are going to help us moving forward. Um, it's hard to answer your question in terms of what we're looking at tonight because I don't, there could be multiple phases of traffic mitigation within the area that we're talking about. Um, because Wex is the first one in, um, and Wex and a few things that go along with it, maybe a daycare, maybe a, a small office might require X to be done, you add, you add edge to it, which is a ways off in terms of determining what exactly it is. Is it a community center and edge? Is it just edge? Maybe a second phase of off-site mitigation because there's, within, so I, it's hard to say exactly, I wouldn't necessarily look at this map and say that is a phase of off-site improvements because there, there's time applied to the amount of development that happens here. And there could be a few different phases of development and also a few different phases of off-sites that go along with it. There's sure, sure, things. I understand that. Um, and I and will be interested to hear that, but I mm -hmm. um, would imagine, I mean myself and I would imagine others would also be interested in what you just described, which is even the, the smaller sort of Immediate steps on um, what may be attached to which type of development and where, even with within a certain um, <coughs> within a certain phase. So, you know, I'm uh, probably obviously, you know, I'm really curious about the sort of overall regional demand for this entire project. I think it's, you know, it's 
so it's large in all the categories, um, you know, all of them, trafficking is one of them, um, in this area. And so I'm just curious about sort of just trying to think that through over time and also on behalf of the rest of the town. So, you know, if, you were, if you're adding, if we were adding an 800 employee firm anywhere, <coughs> I guess we'll, we'll, we'll feel that and we'll see that at key intersections that are probably already um, strained, we'll call it. So, you know, I'm just curious about when, when we might see some of those things, um, whether they be requirements or they be preemptive or they're tied to permits or not tied to permits or whatever, whatever um, you know, you may see as being things happening at the edge of this property or beyond it in order to help the rest of the town um, absorb this type of development, I guess, is kind of mm -hmm. <coughs> Mostly from a traffic perspective, but not exclusively. Right. Well, yeah, we're working through I that. I know it's a very <laughs> sort of unprecedented <laughs> process. I don't envy you. Right. Uh, anyone but it's incremental, it's the right increments and the right ingredients in the incrementalism because it's so. Um, we'll give you a schedule on that too. To the, to the point in terms of moving forward, it's something that will certainly be needed you know, through subdivision and site plan. Are there any other planning board comments this evening? I just want to thank the staff for a really uh, well written uh, staff comment. I especially uh, appreciated the parts where it said the lessons learned from phase one. That was very helpful. And I still don't know how you guys do all that you do. And thank you. We all echo that sentiment. Um, Third. <laughs> With that. I want to obtain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Any second? Second. All in favor. <laughs> wow, I'll race to the end. Thank you, everyone. We appreciate it.